Hey there, how's it going? So the, the point of this video is to um, provide an introduction to uh, calculus, which is really concerned with um, providing mathematical description in contexts where things change. Uh, to be more specific, um, this is introducing differential calculus, which is about rates of change. Um, the, the, the other branch being uh, integral calculus. All right, so you might be here for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, in, in the culture, calculus is maybe perceived as the, the fancy maths. Um, so this might have just piqued your interest. Um, you could be about to learn calculus and want to get ahead of the curve. Um, or for a lot of people, you might have already undertaken some calculus classes and you've maybe learned a bunch of, you know, random algebraic formulas and procedures, but you're not actually sure what you're trying to do. Um, so whatever the reason is for you being here, uh, the, the kind of the intended outcome of this video is to help provide a conceptual understanding um, to, to basically answer the, the question, what, what are you doing when you're doing calculus? All right, so let's get started. I'll just to suppose two contexts for comparison that hopefully everyone can connect with, all right? We've got one is a car driving on a highway. So you can imagine this will be a context where you know probably going at fairly fast speed. That's not that important. Um, but you know, imagine like a, a nice smooth stretch of road for a long period of time. You know, you're just driving at a nice, you know, a constant speed. All right. And we're going to compare this with a car taking off. at some traffic lights, all right? So in this context, um, you know, you're initially stopped. Uh, let's say you, you just put your foot down on the accelerator when the light goes green, and we're gonna make some assumptions like um, the, the car is ex uh, has constant acceleration, um, and you know, you're gonna be picking up speed as the accelerator is put down. All right, so let's think of what each of these contexts might look like graphically. So here if we have a, a distance versus time graph, right, for our car driving on the highway at a constant speed, it's going to be a straight line over time, where maybe after say two hours, it's traveled 220 kilometers, right? So this will be like on an Australian highway, where in New South Wales where I am, um, where you're going 110 k's an hour. All right, with this other context, um, taking off of the traffic lights with constant acceleration, distance over time is gonna look something like this. It's gonna look like the graph um, of a parabola quadratic equation, which later on you'll actually be able to see why that's the case. All right, and maybe in this case, we've got after five seconds, uh, we've, we've gone 50 meters. All right, so like I said, differential calculus is about uh, the rates of change. Um, so in this context of, uh, with the vertical axis being distance, the horizontal being time, uh, the, the rate of change here of distance over time would be the, the speed of the car, all right? Now, there's two different ways we can consider the speed, though. One would be there's the average speed between um, these, these initial points at the origin and the, the specific points I've put on the graph. And the other one would be the instantaneous speed, which would be what's the speed at that particular point that I've put on each graph. All right. So for the first one, the average speed is going to be the, the slope or the gradient of uh, this line, all right? So from the origin, we've got that the gradient here will be the, the vertical difference that arrives will be 220 minus zero. Over the run or the horizontal change will be uh, two minus zero.
And lo and behold, that aligns with what I said about it traveling at a constant speed and the speed being 110 k's an hour. All right? um, then the other question we could ask is the, about the instantaneous speed. So that would be at this specific point, what's the, the gradient um, kind of maybe like near, near that point there, all right? And the instantaneous speed would also be 110 k's an hour because, well, it's on a straight line with, with constant gradient. So at that particular point, the gradient near that point is 110 k's an hour. All right, let's try and do the same thing with our nonlinear graph over here. So again, we're starting at the origin, and if we wanted to do the average, we would be looking at what's the gradient of the line between those two points would tell us the average speed over the first five seconds. All right, so we'd have the, uh, the rise over the run, uh, 50 minus zero over five minus zero, which is um, 10, units there were meters per second and just to kind of um, put, put into context um, like maybe what's the the speedometer reading in the car um, if we times by 3.6 this would be 36 k's an hour all right so that would be if the car has traveled uh, 50 meters in five seconds it's traveled an average of 36 k's an hour over the first five seconds. Now, what if we ask the same question about what's the instantaneous speed? So what's the speed at that particular point? And this would relate to after the five second travel mark, what is the car reading on the speedometer, right? Now, is the car reading 36 Ks on the speedometer? Right over here, we had the speedometer would be reading 110 k's at that two hour travel mark, right? But it's almost certainly not uh, 36 k's an hour. In fact, it has to be faster because it started off at zero and then this is increasing at an increasing rate and getting faster and faster. So if we've got speed of zero at the start and then we've got an average speed of 36, that means we've got to have some other higher speed so that when we average out over the course of that five seconds that it'll it'll bring it back down to meet in the middle somewhere at 36 k's an hour so instantaneous speed we don't know okay so this is what calculus is going to be uh enable us to answer what is the uh, instantaneous speed so contextually what is the speedometer reading on the car which has taken off at the traffic lights with constant acceleration? Um, what, what's, it, what, what, what's the driver seeing at, after five seconds on the speedometer? It's not 36 kilometers per hour, it's something higher. All right, so that's the specific context, but we could like strip away this context, all right, and just have any nonlinear graph with any values there. So I guess geometrically, what is the speedometer on the car? Like what does that relate to on this graph? And what it relates to is not the gradient of you know, this average line here, but it's the gradient of this tangent line here, which is um, a lot of people conceive of kind of a line, kind of straight line, skimming past, not really intersecting through the graph and kind of nicking um, it at a point. So if we were to find the gradient here, that gradient of that tangent would be the, the, the back to the, the, this context would be the, the speed that the car is reading on the speedometer. All right. Now, just to give a more proper description of a, a tangent, um, the, the, the idea of it being a line that kind of just passes the curve, um, skims past and hits the curve once is kind of uh, not the best conceptualization because I could give, you know, if I just 
draw a little graph here. Let's say we had some other nonlinear curve, um, and then I had picked a point, say here, and we drew in the tangent line. Well, yes, maybe like locally near that uh, point, it only skims past it once, but obviously it's it's cut through as well further over here. So that's not the best description um, of a tangent line. And also it's not really capturing what a tangent line really is doing. So you might have heard of the, uh, the language of tangent in the context of uh, circles. So say we had a, a circle and then a tangent line at a particular point. Um, that would be that line, which definitely for a circle, uh, the tangent line is only ever touching uh, the, the curve once. Um, but I guess a, a better explanation of a tangent is that it's a, it's, it's a line which is, um, maybe if we just consider like one half um, from the, the right of the point or the left of the point, is that it's a line that is moving in the same direction um, as the curve at that particular point. So again, with the context of, you know, kilometres per hour highways in Australia, in Australia, we have a good old sport called cricket. And if um, you are bowling a ball, your arm will go in a circular motion. And as you release the ball, the ball will fly out straight, but it will kind of follow the trajectory as you, uh, at, at the point, from the point um, where you released it. So a, be a better idea of a a tangent is maybe something like this, that when you've got a circular motion um, in a particular direction and you release it, the, the tangent line is following that, um, following along that trajectory there. And then, you know, if we've got a line, we can, you know, if we're finding an equation of line in a coordinate system, well, the equation of line is going to be that, that whole thing um, going in both directions. Um, so that description that I just gave there for, um, for the context of a circle will be exactly the same for uh, on, the, on our nonlinear curve geometrically. So the, the tangent line is really a line which is moving in the same direction um, as the curve at that particular point. So just to sum up uh, what, what we're trying to do here is that if we can find the gradient or slope of the tangent line at a particular point, that will tell us the instantaneous rate of change. So that can answer questions like a car that has traveled five seconds, um, uh, in five seconds rather 50 meters, what speed is it reading on a speedometer, right? So that's the kind of questions that uh, calculus will enable us to answer. Um, but of course that can extend beyond the specific rate of change context of speed to um, any other thing that undergoes uh, change and that we can uh, have a nonlinear function for it. Alrighty, that's it then for this one, so catch you later.